Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'm just going to be showing off my finally complete GM binder that I talked about a few, uh, a few videos ago. I've been working on it for the last couple of days, and I decided to just put it together. I was working on it tonight, and I just thought I'd throw up a video. You know, it'll be um, kind of late when I upload this, I know that, but I don't know. I'm just super excited about this, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So, it is pretty big. Um, it is a thick binder. I got this big black binder on Amazon. Uh, it's a three ring binder. It was super cheap on Amazon, and uh, but, it, but it works just for me. So I have a bunch of art that I showed off some of this already on my, well, I showed off the art in the, uh, in the video that I posted about the files that I was going to include. And then I added this little nave. This is underneath the plastic. I just slid it down. It's the Knave um, Kickstarter little uh, badge that you got for kickstarting at a certain level. And uh, so I just, I don't really put badges on my clothes or on like, I don't have a tote bag or anything like that that I put stuff on like that. But I thought I could just slide it in here and it would be a nice little bottom, I don't know, bottom thing to cover it up. This is a picture from Dragon Slayer, the, the new uh, RPG by Greg Gillespie. I love this piece. I think it's great. There's this pile of treasure here. You've got just the, I don't know, it's a great dungeon and it's a great invitation to this binder. And then over here, I have these little stickers which have classic art from these old fairy tales. Uh, there's like, a, you know, uh, Arabian Nights up here too. I think this is from uh, like the Snow Queen or something like that. Anyway, I got this big bundle of stickers because I just thought they looked really cool and I decided because there was this blank space on the side of my binder, I decided to put them there. And then because I liked how it looked, I actually just covered the back in them. <laughs> you know, not everyone's gonna up like this kind of art, but I love it. I don't know if you guys can see some of the details here, but it's just really cool old fairy tale art that really appeals to me. Um, and I just wanted my binder to look aesthetically pleasing to me. And I know it's a little busy, but I like the color mix and I just like how it takes up from the black. It's just, it's going to stand out if I bring this out and I'm working on it. I just, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to look at the back cover and I'm going to just have fun with these little pictures. I put some on the inside of the back cover too. Uh, I might show you guys that. Um, I maybe went a little overboard just because it's a little busy. But again, this is going to be down most of the time, so I'm not going to see it. So it's really just me, you know, when I turn it or when I put it on my shelf or something, I'm going to have this kind of aesthetic. I might put something on the spine. Right now, I don't have anything on there. It's just black. Um, so anyway, that is the... That's the, the cover, and then I'll show you guys what I have inside. So, um, let me open it up. So, first of all, I'm going to show you this. This is just a couple of loose pages, um, Rumors and Adventures from uh, from Shadow Dark. I just slid them into the little plastic clear sleeve here. I didn't know where else to put them, and I just, you know, it's right away have some inspiration. I roll on a rumor table and develop an adventure around whatever rumor I roll, or I can, you know, have the, uh, the just generate a random uh, adventure on the random adventure, you know, the D20 tables, generate a random adventure and then again build it as I go, just so I need inspiration. I got more of these stickers here. Uh, and then, the majority of the book, I'm gonna try to not smash everything over here, is this part. So I have this great piece by uh, this is Peter Mullen. This is one you find in Nave, I think. Although no, this might be Dungeon Crawl Classics. I think it's, I think it's in Dungeon Crawl Classics. Either, either it's in Neighbor Dungeon Crawl Classics, but it's a great piece. And uh, I saw it and I was like, I need that in my book. And then on this side, I included the other one from DCC, which is the, uh, just this really pulpy, you know, maiden about to be sacrificed, adventurers coming to the rescue tribe down below. It just, it, 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 I love it. Um, and, then, and then I just jump right into it. So each section, I tried to pick art that fit. I didn't really have one for this one, but this is my overworld, uh, overworld section. So this is biomes. This is generating a hex. I have, um, you know, my biomes section. I have a faction page. I realize I kind of need to center it a bit better. Yeah, there we go. I've got a faction page here, and then I've got, you know, tons and tons of faction pages that goes forward. The wild. This is from Maze Rats. Basically, I'm just mixing and matching as the um, sections make sense. So basically, this is overworld, so I put in uh, Nave stuff, Maze Rat stuff, uh, Atelier Clandestine's book on hex crawl generation. I put that in here as well. Um, I forgot I didn't include that in my file video, but I included it as well. I thought it was really, really cool. I'm going to put links below to where I, I, you know, included, where I got the stuff that I actually ended up including 
in this binder in case you guys want to make one for yourselves or something like it, you know. Uh, then there's the landmarks page, natural landmarks, artificial landmarks, uh, magical landmarks, uh, content of hexes with uh, different special hexes, names if you want to generate a location based on some English standard or French standard uh, location forms. One of the things that you know you can do if you don't want to just have like an Anglo-Saxon, um, you know, or French base for your campaign is you just generate these normally with adjectives and titles and cities, you know, regular names that we might find in an Anglo-Saxon, you know, in, uh, you know, England somewhere, which is often what our adventures sound like. But then you run them through like a Google Translate, right, to a language of your choice that is what you want. Because most of the time, if you look at the languages, like the place names in, in tons of the languages around the world, they're basically just descriptive, right? Like the big red hill or, you know, the fast river. And it just sounds different in the different languages. So if you just take the names, the forms you get in this, generate all the names you need for your adventure. And then if it's, you know, like a Byzantine-esque adventure, you just find an old Greek translation and translate it into old Byzantine Greek. Or like, you know, if it's Mongolian, you do the same. You can always do that. I've got the city pages from Maze Rats and then going into cities from Nave. Maze Rats and Nave usually feature pretty heavily in this book. Um, they're my main content for random generation and then other books usually give me my like forms and procedures how to do faction controls over over hexes and then i get like particular um factions so criminal organizations for a few pages and then i have like guilds and how to generate those uh, and then some settlement maps from this is from shadow dark and then uh, settlement maps for hamlets and how to lay them out and then for villages with some uh, more and more pages for each of these as they get bigger. So then you get cities, and there's more and more pages even for generating random cities as you go. Um, castles, keeps, you get defenses, all that you might need. Towers and how to generate some towers. Um, great stuff from the Atelier Clandestine book. Uh, but then you get, I also added in shops from Shadow Dark, houses from the Atelier Clandestine, and then taverns and more tavern generation because you always need a good tavern in your adventure at least one preferably more and these this atelier clandestine's tavern generator is great you have like rumors you can find there the desserts that they're serving what the sign looks like outside great tables for generating your your um, taverns then i have a section on layers which is basically like small dungeons for creatures in your hexes with like little descriptions there and then i i this so one of the problems with this book when i first printed it out was that the pages sometimes you know like one file would bleed into the next so i'd be doing this and then suddenly i'd have like a um for, for example this is my special rooms table which is for the dungeon section but then the next page of it was the coat of arms generator and it's like a if I'm going to put this in the dungeon section of my book, which I have a dungeon section in my book, I'm not going to need a coat of arms generator there. So what I decided to do was I, I put the layers up here, and I thought, oh, special rooms make sense. It'll go along with the layers. Because then I can generate like a, a, a quick layer, if you just a few rooms, but then have like a special room in it and make it more interesting. So that if there's a layer on the surface, it's not just like three rooms with a bunch of monsters and treasure. Maybe there's something cool going on in there. So I have that right next to my layer section. And then I have the coat of arms generator for my, because this is the overworld section, right? So coat of arms generator, in case I need like a knightly order or something like that. The end of it, I have a great piece of art. It's basically Conan the Barbarian. This is also from um, Dragon Slayer, uh, the, the RPG by Greg Gillespie. It's another piece. Um, I can't read that upside down, but that's the uh, artist down here at the bottom. Uh, it's a great piece. And then I have my The Maze section. This is the dungeon section of my book. And I have a great piece of art, once again, from Dragon Slayer that shows you going down into the dungeon. I just think it's such a great like transition. I was very proud of that. Um, and it is actually kind of an accident. I, I forgot, because these are printed on cardstock. So basically, I, I, I hole punched all of my pages except the, um, the pieces of art. I put them in these transparent plastic sleeves that are kind of automatically hole punched. You know, just you buy them that way. And then I, I printed them on cardstock, and they were double-sided. And I didn't put the bright... I just, I just kind of put the files all together and, and sent it over to the printer. And they printed it out and just kind of put the ones that they felt... Or, the, you know, the ones that were next to each other in the file together. And it really worked out. Like, like the pieces of art work for my as a transition pretty well. Like, they're not always perfect, but 
I really like this at the end, right next to the coat of arms section. I don't know why. He's not wearing, he's not a knight. He's not wearing coat of arms. I just think it's a great follow-up to like a knightly slaying a dragon section. And then you get the dungeon. And then that kind of happens a few times throughout the book where there's, a, I think, a pretty good transition. So I have the maze. Um, and this goes right into the dungeon. This is my dungeon section of the book. So how to build dungeons, uh, how to lay them out, different, uh, different methods of doing so. You've got the Shadow Dark method, you've got the Atelier Clandestine method, or Atelier Clandestine method, um, and you've got the uh, nave, or the, um, yeah, there's nave tables for delve shifts and rooms and tons of empty rooms and just, you know, more than enough tables for me to generate tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of dungeons, traps and hazards. And I have one page from the uh, dungeon alphabet, T is for traps, and then that goes right into my sick dungeon generation. So you, once you've gone through a few different methods of generating dungeons and random rooms and stuff, you can come ahead and create those loops that you need into your dungeon. So you go back through and loop your dungeon a bit, and you can use these tables to do so. So it's actually laid out, again, I'm pretty proud of this, but I think it's laid out pretty well so that you can kind of read through it and generate the dungeon as you go through this binder. Or I say you, but I mean me. I'll be able to go through this and generate my dungeon as I go without a lot of flipping. And then, then I can always flip ahead to this and just use the Source of Victories. Um, not Source of Victories, sorry, this is Gentle's Dungeon Guide 2, the print-friendly version. They did have one. I just took out Gentle's Dungeon Guide 1 because they, there wasn't a print-friendly version and it wasn't going to work out. So I just took that out of the file entirely and moved right into Gentle's Dungeon Guide 2, which has more than enough material, just tables and tables and tables. You know, I've, I've reviewed that video, or that, that product before. I talked about it in the video where I went through these files, so I'm not going to do it again, but just so much stuff for that in that book. Um, lots and lots of stuff. And then it goes into Ask the Fates, which is just a page. It's kind of, it's an accidental page. It just got included. Um, I don't really need it. It's just a bit, a bit of like, you know, roll and uh, just trust, trust what you roll from Dungeon World, kind of like when you're generating stuff at random. And it's about halfway through the dungeon section, or maybe a little more than halfway. Actually, it's near the end. But it just, you know, it happened to be included, so I just added it there. Um, and then I have some additional stuff to put in the dungeon at the very end. So A is for altars. This is where I have my, you know, my dungeon alphabet stuff. C is for caves, crypts, and all that. Um, uh, entrances and gold. And... Now, again, some of these I would have liked to put in different sections, but uh, I just decided to keep them all together because the other sections are... Uh, because, again, of that two-page thing, like on the front page is uh, Guardians, on the other page is Entrances, which should I put it in Monsters or uh, Dungeon Generation. And so I decided to put it all together at the end of the Dungeon Generation, just so I know where it is. Anyway, all of those, you get to the end, uh, and then you get this nice little piece from Cairn at the very end of this section. And then it transfers over into characters. And I have this great piece of character art from Shadow Dark that I really like. Um, just the guys gathered around the table, the adventurers gathered around the table, and there's a map there. It's a great way to, I think, again, transition into the character section. And then we've got characters, and all the character pages from Maze Rats and Knave in particular, but there's also some from Intellar Clandestine in here, um, from their Hexcrawl Generator book with NPCs that you can roll up wizards, you can roll up uh, career tables from Knave. Um, oh yeah, I love this. There's a, there's a table for wizard staves. So if you're rolling up a wizard, you've got to have a unique wizard staff. And so you're going to put that together. But that, I think that'd be great to use that in conjunction with something like uh, the Monster Overhaul, which has a bunch of like really unique wizards that you can roll up. Just add, use that in conjunction with this. Now, this is one section that I really didn't do well because there's like a weather table, an encounters table, and then there's like a, you know, just a general wizard generating spells section <laughs> because... Some of the tables work with this, and so I just put them. I just put them in here. Um, doesn't make a ton of sense, but it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's not perfect. <laughs> then I get into the recruiting section. More NPC tables, and more NPC tables, and more NPC tables. Shadow Dark NPC tables. If I want to do much a quicker method, where you just you know, do a die drop, and you have all the Shadow Dark characters kind of in one go, which is nice. Um, and then you get to the uh, after that, you get into the monster section. Monsters. Monsters and animals, and this is generating kind of their, you know, new monsters from Knave and, uh, Knave, Shadow Dark, and, uh, Maze Rats in particular. Then there's some dragon tables from Matilda Clandestine, which is nice if you want to generate a particular dragon. It's called Dungeons and Dragons, or at least the base game was. 
Um, <laughs> the guy could get the base game, uh, you know, the touchstone in my mind. Within the Shadow Dark. Uh, and then a really good piece of advice at the end, make it weird. If you're going to create monsters, make them weird. And then a great piece of Peter Mullen art, which demonstrates that weirdness. And I think this is from Nave 2nd Edition, which is coming out. Then I have a really great piece of character team art there. I don't know if you guys can see it. I hope you can. The glare. But this is from the Dungeon Alphabet. I love this one. Um, it just makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, it's like part of the it's part of the treasure. I don't know equipment. I don't know why exactly, but like they're all equipped well. It just again, it just it fits with what I liked about it. <laughs> and then treasures and equipment. And so I have like a bunch of mundane stuff uh, right away. But then I've got the uh, the Shadow Dark random treasure tables, which are awesome. Over zero all the way up through level ten. If you've never given these uh, tables a look, you really really should. Um, from Shadow Dark. They're great. I've used these tables so many times to just like quickly on the fly generate like a d6 random treasures table for a dungeon. That's what I'll often do. Rather than put treasure in particular rooms, I will roll random, I'll put like a random treasure table together and then when players explore or if they kill a monster or if they search something that I didn't expect them to search, because I, I tend to more run improv games, I mean, or I prepare to improvise basically, right? That's what I try to do. So I'll often write up little uh, random encounter, or r not random encounter tables, but random treasure tables right next to my random encounter tables on the maps that I run from. Either if I'm doing digitally, I'll just write it next to it on the file, or I will, if I'm doing physically, I'll just write it on my map. And these tables are great for that. Really, really useful. Treasures, and then tools, mundane tools, all that stuff, mundane items. There's a buildings section in here, which doesn't make a ton of sense. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It was just printed on the back of one of the pages that I like. Then you get boons, which are, you know, non-magical things. Oaths and promises, secrets. There's some blessings on here. And then magic and the magical generation from the different things. Magic, but then you get magic item tables. All the magic item tables from Shadow Dark, which are awesome, 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 awesome. And then I get alchemy, so you have potions. And then more potions. With potions, you generate your own potions. I tend to run alchem alchemy heavy games, so this is great to have, uh, where I can generate cool potions on the fly. Uh, not on the fly, I should say. Again, this isn't actually for on the fly. This is for my prep. But if I'm filling a dungeon, I should say, with potions, and uh, I like to do that, then I'll put them together here. Great piece at the very end. This one doesn't really serve as a bit of a capstone to alchemy, but I just I just like it a lot. It's another one from Dragon Slayer. And then here's my. Uh, this is the one from. Um, what's it called? Dragonlance. I just really liked it, and I included it here. It just ended up being at the last one. Then I have a bunch of blank, blank pages for my um, eventual, you know, as I work through and make some adventures. And then I was do doodling some dungeon maps, and I just, um, I have a bunch of graph paper at the very end, too. Tons and tons of graph paper, which I will hopefully use up. And I doodled a map, and or a couple maps, and just like, I don't know, while I was listening to something, and I just put these together. Uh, I like doodling maps, so I tend to put things together. These are all very simple and they're not very good. Well, I mean, I like this one actually, it's kind of looped. I, I, I might run something here, I could run something there. Um, this is a decent cave, but these are, I mean, this one's fine, I guess, just to get through, but this is just like basically linear. Here, 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 and then there's like one secret door loop. I don't know. When I doodle, I don't tend to think too hard about what I'm generating there. And then at the very end, so all of that, uh, I just slid these pages in the back of the book. These are basically just pages that I couldn't really figure out what to do with. They, they're they just a mix. And they're all mixed too much to kind of split up throughout the rest of the book. So like they're printed on the front and back like a lot. So there's like NPC pages, there's dungeon generation, there's uh, location generation, there's monster generation. These are from um, Perilous Wilds. And I really liked them and I wanted to print them out and keep them, but I don't, I didn't, like find it wasn't aesthetically pleasing to me to split them up and put them in the rest of the book. So I just put them all in the back and again, I know where they're all here. So if I run through these tables and I'm tired of them and then I have these. And at the very end, I put a few more of these stickers on the back, just ones that I like. There's the princess and the pea, I think. And I really like this blue city. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like there's people on a hill overlooking this huge blue city down below. With like, you know, lots and lots and lots of buildings. It's like, I don't know, it looks something like something from Babylon. Great pieces. There's an old elf king. I like this one, sitting underneath a huge oak tree. All right. Well, that is my uh, that is my binder. 
I'm very excited uh, for it, and I'm going to start generating some dungeons with it, and I'm going to hopefully get off the computer a bit <laughs> and just listen to music. Uh, I got a I got a record player. And I'm going to put on some records. I got the the I don't know, it's like a John Williams symphony, I think, uh, that he composed somewhere, and it's a, some of his like best music. And Tim, it's, it's him actually conducting. I'm excited to listen to that and generate a dungeon while I am maybe smoke my pipe. Um, yeah, no, it seems very it seems very. Uh, old school, right? Smoking a pipe while listening to a record and generating a dungeon out of a binder. <laughs> but man, that's the way to go sometimes, right? You know, forget all this modern nonsense. Uh, bring back the 19th century. Like, we didn't have records in the 19th century. Bring back, uh, you know, um, anachronistic history. Well, anyway, guys, I hope this has been interesting. I highly recommend doing this and spending less time on the computer. I, mean, I think we spend way too much time on the computer these days, which is ironic, me talking, telling you guys that on a video, but whatever. You should do it anyway. Hope this has been interesting, guys, and I'll see you in another video.